Welcome to the channel guys, I'm Eric from Techisode TV and I've spent dozens of hours testing dozens of accessories to find the best accessories for any S-series, flip series, or fold series Samsung smartphone. And finally, I have a list of more than 25 of the best accessories. And full disclosure, I purchased all these products with my own money, none of them were sent to me for free, and I've declined every offer from every brand to try to get into this video. If they want their products in this video, they have to earn it. If you appreciate videos like this, let me know by dropping a like down below and leaving a comment because that will be a big help in pushing this video out to more people. Lastly, I do have affiliate links to all these products in the description, so if you want to support the channel, purchasing the products through those links is a great way to do it at no extra cost to you. And as always, there are video time codes to help you guys find the accessories you care most about. With all that out of the way, let's get started. If you're tired of precariously leaning your phone up against something to get a group picture, only to have your phone come up crashing to the ground, I recommend the Grip Tight One Micro Stand because it's the most compact, durable, and featureful smartphone tripod I could find. It has a ball head so you can still get perfectly level shots on uneven surfaces, and it folds up flat so you can easily fit it in your pocket. I've had this for over four years now, and I still use it often to get family photos. It wasn't until recently that the ball had started to get a bit too loose to use with heavier phones, so I tried finding a better compact tripod and it couldn't, so I just bought another one because they're really just that good. If you want something even more compact and easy to use, check out this phone mounted stand and ring holder. It mounts to the back of your phone or case and has a little ring that pops out that makes it easier to hold your phone, and this piece also rotates all the way around to give you different holding positions. And if you pull it out further, you can actually use it as a stand to watch videos with or take pictures with. And it also comes with this magnetic bar with an adhesive backing. And you can stick this anywhere you'd like to mount your phone, like maybe in your car. Then once it's stuck to your car, you can just bring your phone close to it and it'll stick right on. The one notable downside with this is that since this covers up a large area of the back of your phone and is made out of metal, you won't be able to use any wireless charging if you use this stand. But if you're okay with that, this is an excellent combo stand. Speaking of mounting things to cars, the IATI One Touch Wireless 2 car mount is still my favorite wireless charging car mount for non-folding phones. It can flip around, rotate and extend. It has a button in the middle that's used to automatically close the arms around your phone when you press it into the stand. And you can remove the phone with one hand by squeezing the two wings until they click. The bottom cradle can also be adjusted to different sized phones by pressing the button on the back and adjusting it up or down. It comes with the car charger adapter and even has a secondary five watt charger that can be used at the same time. That's not a terribly fast charger, but it's great that you don't have to buy your own. The adhesive pad holds on pretty well, but I did notice that it doesn't hold on quite as well as some of the older IATI car mounts. Fortunately, it does come with a mounting pad in the box, which I did need for my car's dashboard. If the suction pad ever gets dirty from taking it on and off a bunch of times, you can just rinse it off in the sink, let it air dry, then you're good to go. Oh, and did I mention that this mount holds your phone really, really well? You can get this mount in a dashboard and windshield version, which is what I have here, or a CD player and air vent version, depending on your mounting needs. I'll have links to both versions in the description. One recommendation I have with all wireless charging car mounts is that you should place the cradle in front of one of your air conditioning vents if possible, especially if you live somewhere that's really hot and the sun's gonna be beating on the charger all day. And this is because the charge speed will start to reduce as the charger itself heats up. For the Fold 4, I finally found an incredible wireless charger that lets you mount your phone in the open position, is reliable, and has a fast wireless charging. And that mount is the Joyveva Wireless Charging Car Mount. It comes with both a vent mount and a dashboard mount with an adhesive plate to stick to your dash so the mount stays on more securely. But there's no option for a windshield mount. That said, the cradle accepts any standard 5 8 inch ball head, so if you really wanted to mount this to your windshield, you could technically pick up a non-wireless charging IATI windshield mount and attach the Joyveva cradle to that mount. And one quick note with the vent mount, it'll only work with straight vents, so if you have circular vents like in my car, you won't be able to use this vent mount. 
Now the cradle is what makes this so special. It opens automatically when you start your car and also closes automatically when you put your phone in the cradle. You can also put your phone in both portrait or landscape orientations and even closed if you prefer. There's a push button at the bottom of the cradle to get the arms to open so you can take your phone out. And the cradle even has a super capacitor so you can release your phone even after you've turned your car off. In terms of wireless charging, this was able to actively charge my phone while I was on a 40 minute drive using Google Maps and YouTube Music at the same time with a high screen brightness. Now that was with the very slim Samsung S Pen case with the S Pen portion removed. So if you have a much thicker case on, you may not get as fast of charging. And if you have a full coverage case like the Spigen Slim Armor Pro that does cover the hinge, and has this little bump out when you open your phone, there's no way you're gonna be able to use this stand at all because that bump is gonna push your phone too far out. The mount also comes with a two port charger and a USB-C cable. And that cable is a 90 degree cable to help you keep it out of the way. If you don't care for wireless charging because you're always plugged in for Android Auto, then I recommend the IATI One Touch 5 mount. This is the much less expensive non-wireless charging version of the mount. It has all the same great features, just without the wireless charging. It does, however, come with a small magnetic strap that you can wrap around your USB-C cable. This strap then magnetically attaches to the back of your mount when your phone isn't connected, making cable management a lot easier. If you want a non-wireless charging mount for the Fold 4, then you should check out this gooseneck style mount. The suction cup sticks to your windshield, and this bottom piece also has an adhesive to stick to your dash. So you'll have two points of contact, one on your dash and one on your windshield. The neck part of the mount is super flexible so it can get you to any position you need for your specific car, but it's also stiff enough so it won't wobble around when you're driving. The cradle has a spring-loaded extension on one side and on the other side, if you squeeze these two buttons, it shoots out like you're in a spy movie. So this will allow for extremely wide devices and can even double as a tablet mount. To get the extension to go back in, just press the two side buttons again Push the extension in, then release the side buttons. If you don't like having to plug your cable in every time for Android Auto, or maybe you just prefer wired charging over wireless charging, then you're gonna love this magnetic USB-C cable. This is actually a two-part cable. The USB-C portion comes right off, and this little nub plugs right into your phone and stays there. So this will stick out a bit if you don't have a case on your phone, but if you do have a case, it sticks out much less. Once it's connected, you can just bring the cable close to your phone, and it'll snap right into place. I've been using this with Android Auto for a while now, and since this has an incredibly strong magnet, I haven't had any disconnection issues. The cable also supports fast charging up to 15 watts and is reversible. If you're getting the non-wireless charging car mount and you're not gonna be using Android Auto, then you wanna pick up the Basis 160 watt car charger. It can charge any Samsung phone or tablet at their fastest charge speed. And if you plug in something like a laptop, you can charge the laptop at 100 watts and two other devices at 30 watts each, all at the same time. They even included a high power USB-C to USB-C charging cable. The build quality is great and it has a blue ring that illuminates to let you know that it's plugged in all the way. The only downside is that it's pretty beefy, coming in at one and five eighths inches across the face of it. If you want something a bit more compact, but still capable of fast charging all your devices, you can check out the Mananam 73 watt or 101 watt chargers. Though at the time of making this video, it looks like Mananam has replaced the 101 watt charger with a 136 watt version that's just slightly larger than this 101 watt version. Regardless, all of these are notably smaller than the basis charger if you don't mind losing some power output. Did you know that every flagship Samsung smartphone, with the exception of the Flip series, doubles as a full-blown desktop computer, complete with a desktop for shortcuts and folders, floating windows, desktop versions of Microsoft Office, a desktop-style web browser, a file browser with drag-and-drop support, and even support for game controllers so you can play on a big screen. All you need is a USB-C to HDMI adapter or a USB-C to USB-C cable and a monitor that supports either USB-C or HDMI depending on what you're using. Just plug one end into your phone and the other end into the monitor and DeX will start automatically. You can even connect wirelessly to any TV or monitor that supports Miracast, which is most modern TVs but not that many monitors. 
if you do want to wirelessly connect to a monitor, you can get this Miracast adapter from Microsoft. This will let you wirelessly stream decks to any monitor with an HDMI input. The downside with the wireless connection is that you'll be limited to 1920 by 1080 resolution, and you'll have an increased latency, which will make it hard to play fast paced games. While your phone can double as a trackpad and keyboard when using DeX, you can also connect to any Bluetooth keyboard and mouse. And if you want the most compact option for traveling, the choice is easy. It's this foldable keyboard and trackpad combo from iClever. It can connect to three devices, turns on and off automatically when you open and close it, has tactile buttons, and a very responsive trackpad with gesture and click support. It also has physical left and right click buttons if you prefer. And it even comes with a compact folding stand for your phone. This keyboard also comes with a nice carrying case to keep it safe while you're traveling. If you want to take DeX to the next level, then I highly recommend the HireCool USB-C Hub. It supports power pass-through, so you can fast charge your phone while it's in DeX mode. It has three USB 3.0 ports for connecting external hard drives or an RF style keyboard and mouse, an SD card and micro SD card reader, a 4K capable HDMI output port to connect to your monitor, and a gigabit ethernet port if you want a fast and reliable internet connection while using DeX. All of Samsung's latest flagship smartphones support at least 25 watt charging, with the S22 Ultra technically supporting 45 watt charging. That said, in real world usage, there isn't much of a speed difference between Samsung's official 25 watt and 45 watt chargers. So I recommend just getting the 25 watt charger if you want to get almost the fastest charging while saving yourself some cash. The one downside with these chargers is that they only have one port. So if you want a multi-port charger that can charge all of your devices at their max charge speeds, then I'd recommend the Link On 166 watt charger. That's right, 166 watts. This will let you charge a laptop at 100 watts, a Tab S8 Ultra at 30 watts, and two other devices at up to 18 watts each, all at the same time. This charger also includes two converters in the box, one for the UK and one for the EU. And if you're just using the United States style prongs, they do fold up for easy traveling. That said, this is a pretty beefy charger to travel with. I've been using this as my main charger at my desk for well over a year now, and it's worked perfectly. If you often misplace your phone, keys, bag, or even your pet, Samsung's smart tags would be a smart choice for you. There are two versions to pick from, a standard smart tag and the plus version. Both tags have small holes at the top that can be used to attach them to things like keychains, bags, or pet collars, or you can simply place them inside a suitcase. These tags allow you to see your last known location, search for them nearby, which will give you a meter telling you how close you are to them. Then you can make the tag ring to make it even easier to find. If the tag was last seen at a different location, like at a friend's house, you could automatically start a Google Maps navigation to drive to where the tag is. Both tags also have a physical button in the center, and the button can be used for a number of different things. You could set up a double press to start ringing your phone in case you misplace it. A single press can control any smart device or run a smart things routine, which would be good for maybe shutting off all of the lights when you're on your way out the door. You could use it to send a notification to someone, which would be good for parents who want their kids to send them a message when they get home from school. They could leave one at the door, and the kids could just press the button when they walk in. And you also get the option to arm a supported security system on your way out the door. There's also a press and hold option, which will give you all the same control options as a single press. The Smart Tag Plus has two significant benefits. In my experience, when tracking the tags, I was able to get much closer to the Smart Tag Plus because it adds a physical distance measurement, whereas the regular Smart Tag only has a bar meter, which is good enough to get you in the same room as a tag, but that's about it. The Smart Tag Plus also lets you use augmented reality with your camera to give you visual cues to help you find the tag. So it's up to you if you think the added accuracy is worth the price jump for the Smart Tag Plus. If you have a dash cam, trail cam, or any action camera, or you'd just like to have access to a lot of movies without taking up a bunch of space on your phone, then this incredibly compact micro SD card reader from Ugreen is for you. The micro SD card just slides right into the back, then you plug the USB-C side into your phone. Now, if you're ever in an accident, you can quickly take out the dash cam's micro SD card and show the crash footage to the police. Or you can quickly check your trail cam footage with just your phone, edit GoPro footage on the go, or bring a bunch of offline movies with you on a long flight. 
And since this adapter has such a long USB-C portion, it actually still fits even with a thick case on. Lots of people ask what my favorite case and screen protector are, so I'll run through them briefly. But first, to be clear, these cases are not sponsored, they're just legitimately my favorite cases. So for any non-folding phone, I almost always get the Spigen Neo Hybrid if I want the slimmest protection. This is a very premium feeling and looking case with moderate protection without adding a lot of bulk. If I have a unique phone color I want to show off, I'd go with the Spigen Ultra Hybrid. This offers a bit more protection than the Neo Hybrid, and the clear back is very resistant to yellowing. For reference, here's the Ultra Hybrid on my two-year-old iPhone 12 Pro Max, and it still looks great. The Spigen Tough Armor is my go-to case if I want great drop protection with the added bonus of a kickstand. This kickstand can also be used in two different landscape orientations to give you two different viewing angles. If I want the best kickstand experience, I'll get either the Torres Mars Climber or the ESR kickstand case. These cases allow you to stand the phone upright and the stand has a stiff hinge allowing you to choose just about any viewing angle you want. If I want apocalyptic protection, I go with the Subcase Unicorn Beetle Pro. It's a two-part case with front and back protection, has a built-in kickstand that works in both landscape and portrait modes, and it also has a belt clip if that's your jam. If I want an official Samsung specialty case, I'd go with the S-View case and not the LED cover because the S-View case gives you way more features for the money. I already uploaded deep dive videos on a bunch of these cases, so if you want to learn more about their pros and cons, you can check those videos out by clicking the links in the description or the pinned comment. In terms of a screen protector, there's really only two options if you want a glass screen protector, and that's the Whitestone Dome screen protector and the Amfilm screen protector. Both of these support the fingerprint sensor without using the cutout in the middle of the glass like most other glass screen protectors do. I've used both of these and can say that the Whitestone Dome was definitely a little bit easier to install, but I didn't have fingerprint recognition issues with either of them. For folding phones, the picks are a bit different. If I want the most protection, I'd go with either the VRS TerraGuard or the Spigen Slim Armor Pro. Both provide excellent protection and also cover the hinge with a spring-loaded cover. The TerraGuard offers a more rugged look and it does feel like it would be a bit more protective than the Spigen case. But the Spigen case will be a bit slimmer with a more professional look to it. Regardless, you can't go wrong with either one. In terms of official Samsung cases, I recently uploaded a video comparing the Fold 4's Grip, Stand, and S Pen standing cases. Each one had clear pros and cons, but at the end of the day, it's the standing cover with S Pen that's been on my Fold 4 more than any other case. And that's mainly due to the fact that I actually use the S Pen. And if you want to know why I use the S Pen, I also recently uploaded a video on the top 20 most powerful S Pen features. I'll leave a link to that as well if you're interested. For Samsung's official Flip 4 cases, none of them really stood out to me personally. I do have the leather case and the strap case. The leather case is good if you want a high quality leather with a little hinge protection thanks to the leather strap. Though the strap does occasionally get bunched up when opening the phone if something blocks the metal stopper. And that can get a little annoying. The silicon strap case is a good option if you want something to slide your fingers into to make it easier to hold the phone. And it's adjustable so you can make it a bit looser if you have larger hands. However, there is a hard plastic ring at the bottom that you could use to strap the phone to a bag if you really wanted to, but that honestly seems more annoying than helpful. If anything, this piece really just helps keep the strap from pulling off the case. For screen protectors, Samsung recommends that you don't put a screen protector on the folding screens, so I don't. But for the outside screen, I have tried the Whitestone Easy Glass screen protector, and I don't have any complaints outside of the fact that it does leave a pretty big gap between the edges of the protector and the edges of the phone. This allows it to work with any case, but if you're not going to be using a case, you might want to look for a protector that offers more coverage. Speaking of your screens, if you're looking for a great microfiber cleaning cloth to clean your screens, I've been using the Magic Fiber Cleaning Cloths for a couple years now, and they work great. You probably already have a wireless charger by now, but if you don't, or you're looking to upgrade, here are my favorites. If you just want the fastest wireless charging, then my recommendation used to be Samsung's official 15 watt wireless charging stand. 
But since this is no longer available, my new recommendation is Samsung's official 15 watt charging pad for a single device or their 15 watt charging pad duo if you wanna charge both your phone and a watch or wireless charging earbuds at the same time. One important thing to know about all flat Galaxy Watch chargers is that any watch band that doesn't allow the watch to sit flat on a table will prevent it from working on a flat wireless charger. So if you have a band like this magnetic debuckle, I recommend getting a charging stand like one of these. You just insert the charging puck that came with your watch and you're good to go. And depending on which Galaxy Watch charging puck you have, you'll need a different version of this stand. So I'll leave a link to both types in the description. If you don't need the fastest charging, but instead just wanna charge more devices at the same time, then you'll definitely wanna check out Samsung's wireless charging trio pad. This lets you charge two phones or wireless earbuds and a Galaxy Watch at the same time. Just know that the Galaxy Watch charger is only for the Galaxy Watch 3, Watch Active, or newer Samsung smartwatches and can't be used with anything else like wireless earbuds. So if you have an older Samsung smartwatch, I'd skip this charger. I did try a few third-party chargers as well, like this adjustable speak and stand, but what I noticed was that when I was charging devices with the stand flat like this, the devices would often heat up a lot and it didn't matter if it was phones or wireless earbuds, everything would just get pretty hot to the touch. And that doesn't happen with any of my official Samsung chargers. The only chargers I could find that were decently reliable were the ones that were just permanently in a stand position like this. But even still, I personally much prefer Samsung's official wireless chargers. That said, if you've used a third party charger and had a great success with it, let me know in the comments below so I can check it out. I've tested a bunch of wireless earbuds over the years, and my favorite earbuds so far are the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro. These things blew me away with sound quality, volume, long-term comfort, and just the sheer number of features. In fact, these things are so feature-packed that I made a dedicated top 10 unknown features video just for them. And if you wanna check that out, you can check the link in the description or the pinned comment. If you want a less expensive option that still has incredible sound quality, comfort, and a ton of features, the original Galaxy Buds Pro were my go-to earbuds all the way up until I got the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro. So these are still an incredible option at a much lower price. If you prefer over-ear headphones, then you'll definitely wanna check out the Sony WH-1000XM4s or the brand new WH-1000XM5s. I've been using these XM4s for about two years now and I absolutely love them. They are super comfortable, have incredible noise canceling, and the touch controls work great. You can play pause by double tapping, increase or decrease the volume by swiping up or down, and skip forward or backwards through your music by swiping forwards or backwards. There's also an ambient sound mode that lets you hear your surroundings, as well as a voice detect feature that'll automatically enable ambient sound mode when you start talking, which would be particularly useful if you had your hands full and need to quickly talk to somebody with your headphones on. There's even a customizable button that can be used to quickly change your sound mode or activate Google Assistant or Amazon Alexa. The inside of the headphones have a proximity sensor to detect when you take the headphones off and will automatically pause your music for you. Then when you put the headphones back on, it'll automatically start playing the music again. In terms of battery life, you get about 30 hours of playback, but even when the battery dies, you can just use the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack to keep listening without power. There's also support for fast charging, where just 10 minutes of charging with the USB-C port will get you about five hours of playback. The XM5s improve on these features, but have the notable trade-off of not being as portable. While these XM4s can fold into themselves and fit into the small included carrying case, the XM5s do not fold in and thus require a notably larger carrying case. I'll have links to both in the description and a pinned comment to make it easier for you to compare the two. If you want to stick with your favorite 3.5 millimeter headphones, I'd recommend the Ugreen 2-in-1 headphone adapter. This has a power pass-through so you can still charge your phone at fast charging speeds while using the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And if you just want a straight adapter with no charge capability, then I'd go with the JSOX adapter. And in case you're wondering, both of these adapters work with the inline play, pause, and volume buttons that come on most wired earbuds. If you're in the market for a smartwatch to go along with your Samsung phone, the choice is easy. Samsung's Galaxy Watch 5 or Watch 5 Pro are feature-packed smartwatches with great battery life. Both of these are swim-proof, can take electrocardiograms to check for atrial fibrillation, 
They can take body composition measurements, which show super detailed health info like body fat percentage, fat mass, skeletal muscle, body water, and more, which is something that even the latest Apple Watch can't do. They can track over 90 different types of exercises, and some of them have audio guidance to keep track of reps, and can even tell you when to speed up or slow down depending on the exercise. They can continuously monitor your heart rate and stress levels. They have always on displays, so they look more like a traditional watch. They support Samsung Pay and Google Wallet. You can use any standard 20 millimeter watch band to fully customize the look of your watch, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. These watches are so feature packed that I just uploaded a top 30 unknown features video for the Galaxy Watch 5 and Watch 5 Pro, where I dive deep into what these watches are capable of. If you're even remotely interested in these watches, then I highly recommend clicking or tapping this video right here to see those unknown features. And if you guys don't wanna miss out on more deep dive coverage just like this, consider subscribing and turning on notifications so you don't miss the upload. That's it for this tech episode. God bless guys and I'll catch you in the next one.